Don't try this at home, it will mess you up. Hi, I'm Norman from ToonTrack. We're recording an SDX library, which is an expansion library for Superior Demo 3, together with Eddie Kramer here at Air Studios in London. When Norman and I first chatted about what's the goal, what do we really want to do, what's cool? It was actually very obvious. Um, we thought about all the great uh, bands Eddie recorded with over the years, and the idea behind the product is to capture all these great drum sounds he produced. I said, well, how about if we had a Charlie Watts kit, a John Bonham kit, and a Mitch Mitchell kit? And he went, yeah, perfect, done. And of course, at first, this sounds a little bit unreal to you if you get, if you get the chance to, to work with this legend and with this man. So for the Bonham-inspired sound that we tried to capture... We found a drum kit that was late 67, 68, somewhere in there, because the band didn't really establish themselves till 69. So I figured if we could find a drum kit that was from that era, we're rocking. Later on, we got the Vista Light. Now, the Vista Light is so accurate. If John Bonham walked in and played it, he would say, yeah, that's my kit. The product idea from the beginning was to include many different tools on the drums. <laughs> you got timps, you got a freaking huge gong. Which rang forever, of course. <laughs> You've got hands. Which was very painful for me, but uh, which sounds great in the product, you will hear it. Regarding the timpanis, we actually didn't sample them uh, in a classic way. We used actually sticks, drumsticks, uh, for sampling those. Magnificent. Which is actually what he would use when he played them on stage. Of course, we shouldn't forget about all the little tools that John used during his performances. Um, one very important thing and essential thing to his hi-hat playing is the uh, so-called ching ring, which he used on, uh, mounted on the hi-hat. And we are going to sample the hi-hat as well with the ching ring and without it, of course. And he used a bunch of uh, cowbells all the time, so we sampled those. Uh, and they're all included in that beautiful Amber Vista light kit. But Eddie Kramer is obviously not only famous for his work with Led Zeppelin, he has also recorded the Rolling Stones. Our idea was to capture that drum sound as well. So we recorded two drum sets that would be in the style of Charlie Watts' drum sound and playing. And we also had a kit in a beautiful blue oyster finish, also from the 60s. Both kits sounded great here in the room. One of the things we were very concerned about is 
finding the right gear. And the name Yard came up. And I walk into the studio and I see this huge freaking collection of drums. And he's the master. He has sourced this stuff out and it is exact. So if we would come across a problem on a, on a drum, and I remember we had one problem with a, with a floor tom, with an 18-inch floor tom. It's an old drum, it's from the 60s, it's an original drum. And there was some rattle on, on some screws somewhere in the drum, and, and we called Yard in, who was listening. Hey Yard, that tom, it's a bit wonky, can you, oh, okay, he's in the back there, banging away on it, comes back five minutes later, it's perfect. So this was very, very impressive to see uh, how he works and how quick he is and the results he gets out of the drums. We really have gotten some, some great drum sounds here. And then of course there's Mitch Mitchell, the drummer of Jimi Hendrix. So do, do one of those uh, lovely little Mitch Mitchell And Eddie has produced all the records and mixed all the records of, of Jimi Hendrix, as we all know. And we had a great uh, sounding and really beautiful looking uh, silver sparkle kit from the late 60s. Mitch used quite high tunings because he was a uh, drummer that was very much influenced by jazz. And we tried to really get that tuning uh, as exact as we could. Here for this beautiful Mitch Mitchell setup we have here, we decided to also record brushes because Mitch Mitchell was a drummer that was very much influenced by jazz, by jazz music, and he uh, pretty often used brushes uh, in his performances. And we decided to capture that with playing the brushes on the whole kit, so on the toms, but especially on the snare drum. And we decided to record a lot of different articulations to really be able to realistically mimic what uh, a real drummer or what Mitch Mitchell would have been playing during his performances. It's a lot of work. It requires tremendous concentration. I now understand how far one can take this. All the pro sounds are there. It's just a matter of getting yourself into that mindset to figure, well, I need, do I need a bottom sound here or I need a Charlie Watts' sound? Can I take one of Charlie Watts' drums and mix it with a Bonham thing and a, and, and a Mitch Mitchell symbol, I could do that. It's endless what you can do with this program. I think I can speak for the whole team. We had a, an amazing time here at Air Studios together with him. It was a very, very joyful ride, the whole experience here. Now piss off you bastards and let me go home. <laughs>